It's Tuesday night in East London. I'm waiting to meet some young men who have a passion for illegal dogs. Hello, is that Alan? Over the last decade, 27 people in the UK have been killed by dogs. The Dangerous Dogs Act was brought in 25 years ago and banned the ownership of four dog types. The most notorious was the pit bull. Pit bull terriers and Japanese tozers will be banned. This law was meant to crack down on widespread dog attacks, but today they're at an all-time high. I want to find out why the problem is getting worse and if these illegal dogs really are to blame. Despite being illegal, many pit bulls still exist under the radar. How you doing? You alright? Steven. I've come to a secret location to meet some lads whose dogs have been involved in attacks. Some have asked to remain anonymous. What, yeah, what is this place? This is a mechanic's yard, yeah. but um, we use it as a jam spot in the manor, innit? Everyone is anyone comes around here. Jams, Everyone just passes through. Finds their weed. So you've always had bully breeds? Well, always had a bulldog or a mastiff. Yeah, it's always capable of doing something. Reese, not his real name, is on a 10 year ban from owning dogs after one of his pit bulls attacked. It's a bit of a sad one, really, in terms of they took the dog from me and they destroyed the dog and they also um, <coughs> arrested, <coughs> arrested me, you know. Reese was charged with owning a banned breed and served 30 months behind bars. I suppose the only reason I got that type of breed in the first place because I was a teenager, it was like following fashion, everybody had a nice dog. I never see her as a banned dog, a mastiff cross pit bull. I thought yeah. if it's a cross, then maybe it's not illegal because it's not really a pit bull, do you know yeah. what I mean? But um, it's the fact that she grew kind of large yeah. and she had the strength in the head to attack if she had to. Three of these dogs are legal, but John's told me Coco is a full-blooded pit bull that's banned in the UK. If I kick the fingers in the right way, she's taking your nuts off. Really? Yeah. I'm really worried now because when I first met her, she was sniffing around my bollocks. <laughs> oh no, she got me. <laughs> it's the whole point of having one of these. She can jump up and attack something quite happily. So, how did you teach her that? What are you holding? So, she plays with this, you taught her on this? Yeah. Come on, sexy. Come on, sexy. Come on, come on. I wouldn't have a dog that isn't going to be useful in a situation yeah. that might get a bit sticky, you know? There's a couple of times in my life that the dog has made that difference, you know, where I've been able to walk away from well, that situation. I suppose situation. then it's, it's picking a dog for what type of life you're living, isn't it? If you're going yeah. to find yourself in them situations... Then That's you're exactly need it. A I'm not a pretty quick. little choir chick that walks down the middle of Oxford Street with my handbag dog with my little tea cut hour. Yeah, yeah, I'd think different of you if I saw you with a handbag to be Yeah, honest. there you go. <laughs> <laughs> but I want to know why John wants a dog that's banned on our streets. If you go where I live in South London, well, if you don't want to walk around certain streets, yeah. certain corners, if men know you're coming around the corner and then they see this big dog head coming in as well, they, they think, think twice. Yeah, it's more I'm just trying so to get more with my defensive. Yeah, defensive. And, yeah. So I see it as it does its job. I've never cared what the dog looks like. It's the attitude in the dog mm -hmm. that makes me want to have that dog. But then you have to be responsible still. You can't just. This is it. It's the owner. It's the person that's got control of that dog. Mm. You know? You cannot have one of these things and think that it's there for you to use it as a weapon. That yeah. dog is there as your pet. If that dog, when you get into trouble, decides to back you, that's yeah. on that dog. Yeah, but if you pick that dog up and put it on someone, that's on you. I mean, look at her, she looks like a little golden retriever, man. <laughs> Almost. <laughs> you know? Yeah, apart from the red nose, yeah, I mean, I it gives her away a little bit, shouldn't it, darling? Yes, it does. But yeah, she's the softest little buggy you'll ever meet in your life. Do you piss me off? <laughs> Pitbull Terrier is originally from America and was bred for dogfighting. Along with others like the common Staffordshire Bull Terrier, it's known as a bull breed. And descended from dogs used in the ancient blood sport, bull baiting. 
As a boy growing up on an estate in East London, I knew a lot of people with dogs like these. Growing up somewhere like this, as a young man, you do have a lot to contend with, and quite often you have to try and uphold an image of masculinity, um, because if you're seen as weak, then you'll get picked on. And getting picked on somewhere like this is quite different to a little bit of name calling, especially when you get involved in certain things and as you get older. I do feel a little bit conflicted, you know, because to be fair, I would want my dog to protect me. But then, at the same time, I don't go with my dog into biting tires and I don't have a command for him to, you know? I understand the appeal of illegal dogs to these young men. But nationwide, this kind of dog has been responsible for three fatal attacks in the last two years. The following day, John brings me back to the place where one of his pit bulls was involved in a violent attack. He's brought a different dog along with him. So this is where it happened? This is where it happened. This is where we used to be all the time. You used to live here as well? Yeah, when I was homeless. How long were you here for? About a year and a half. Yeah? Yeah. Hey, oh. So what happened? Um, we had someone living here in a caravan, Yeah. and they were wanted by the old bull for something that was rather unscrupulous. Yeah. And we weren't happy about it, so we tried to hand him into the police. And he got a phone call out to his family or whatever. They came storming in the gates, yeah. started a fight with us. So what happened when they come through the gate? Um, I was up in the arch fixing a van. Yeah. And I just heard a load of commotion, came running out, and another guy was there rocking it out with like, the two big keys. Yeah. And then the dogs were running around and then I heard screaming and then yeah. see what happened and yeah, it wasn't... Um, what sort of injuries did they sustain? Uh, just flesh, it was, it was flesh wounds, so they weren't at risk of dying or anything, but yeah, they had um, a, a severe wound to one of the geese's faces, he's had his ear nearly bitten off oh. and another guy had his arm really badly quite ripped up. Yeah. You see the side of his Oh, ear. that's his ear, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, mate. Um, it's, oh. A, it's a gruesome injury. It's not, it's not very nice. And I'm not proud that it happened. Don't think for one second I'm trying to glorify it in any way whatsoever. But a dog did what a dog was supposed to do, in my opinion. Yeah? It saw its owner getting hurt and went, you know what, that ain't happening for my watch. Yep. And why should the dog get punished for that? So they tried saying that we used the dogs as weapons. Right. Yeah, but the dogs were in this yard when the yard was sealed. Yeah and they've come up in here. Can you blame the dog? You ever worry about putting a dog in harm's way? Um, do you mean by having a dog that does a job? Well, the whole reason of humans having dogs has always been to help them on a hunt or whatever else. I mean, sheep dogs were first to be used weren't to round up sheep, it was to keep the wolves away from the sheep, you know? That's why Rottweilers are sheep dogs, you know? That's why it's, it's so, it's, no. The dog's there to do a job. You know, if not, don't have the dog, you know. Pictures of the year were pretty gruesome. Um, that wasn't very pretty. To be honest though, I would have expected worse. Three dogs, all with the capabilities those dogs have. It's probably not a good idea to encourage those behaviours in a dog, especially not not dogs as capable as that because then it's always something that they stand the chance of doing or it's how they're going to react if they are ever in a situation. Dogs are very loyal and they are very protective so further encouraging that behaviour probably makes it more likely to happen which is, is not a good thing. If you look at, at what's happened as a result of dogs that have been in his and his mates care attacking people it's not done their lives any favours you know, not the dogs or theirs. Those people who encourage aggressive behaviour in these dogs only perpetuate their bad reputations. But that leaves a majority of bull breed owners, like me, tarred with the same brush. I have an Aylstone old time English bulldog called Arthur. People's reactions to him in the park um, differ, to be honest with you. It really depends on what people know about dogs. Some people see him and go, oh my God, I haven't seen an old time in ages, because there's not that many of them about. Other people think he's a pit. 
Oh my God, you need to put that dog down. When you're out with these dogs, you get used to being judged. But certain breeds and their owners have an unfair reputation. Funny when little dogs run up to him, you know, start barking and yapping, essentially causing the problem. He's all right, mate. Arthur, come here, boy. <laughs> when you think about status dogs and who might have them, it's generally the stereotype that comes to mind, isn't it? Young boys, tattoos, low socioeconomic background. Me. <laughs> Leave it, Arthur. I want to try and challenge people's perceptions of what a dangerous dog is. Sit. And I want to find out if a banned breed necessarily determines a dangerous dog. So why was the pit bull banned in the first place? In May 1991, a highly publicised pit bull attack shocked the nation. The Home Secretary Kenneth Baker says yesterday's attack by a pit bull terrier on a six-year-old Bradford girl, Rukshana Khan, was appalling. She's now in intensive care. This attack will further heighten public concern about the dangers apparently posed, particularly... Just six months later, the Dangerous Dogs Act was rushed through Parliament. I can tell the House from midnight tonight the import of dogs bred for fighting, such as the American pit bull terriers and Japanese tozers, will be banned. The new law outlawed pit bulls and three other breeds, the Argentinian Mastiff, Fila Brasilia and Japanese Tosa none of which are common in the UK. But since then, the number of dog bites resulting in hospitalisation has shot up by seven times. Last year, there were over 7,000. So why isn't the law protecting us? And is it affecting some people more than others? I'm going to meet a professor of sociology, Simon Horsworth. How are you? I'm Stephen. Hi, Simon. Simon, nice lovely to meet you. Who's this? This is Hazel. Hello, Hazel. Simon is an expert in urban violence, street gangs and the law. The interesting thing is when they created the legislation, you know, uh, it was quite right. They were contemplating banning a whole set of dogs, you know, Alsatians and Rottweilers. The, you know, the guy that was the architect of the act, Kenneth Baker, basically argued that uh, he didn't want to upset, and his, he said this is biography, the Green Wanny Brigade, you know, so these dogs were let off. It's because these dogs were associated with young kids in inner city estates mm -hmm. at a time when the underclass was being blamed for everything that was going wrong, and all of a sudden it seemed quite easy then to justify seizing these dogs and just having them all killed. Which ends up with beautiful dogs like this one getting put down. Yeah. Nine years ago, Simon acquired Hazel from a neighbour who'd neglected her, but he didn't know what she was. It's only when I was walking down the street, I suddenly found myself getting street respect, and I was thinking, what's that all about? <laughs> it's quite funny. Street you, respect from yeah, who? Oh, so you get these big guys. Some guys will stop in the car, get out, be looking at the dog. What's that? What's that? I say, uh, right. it's a staffy, I think. Yeah. It's got a night nose staffy, that's a red nose. <laughs> So I kind of go back, looked in Google, and all yeah. of a sudden pictures of the dog came up in America. Right. It's called a pit bull terrier. Simon now believes the Dangerous Dogs Act is out of date and unfair. For the country that prides itself on, you know, loving man's best friends, it's the first country in the world to actually create legislation designed to totally liquidate a breed. Yeah. Not on the basis of what they might do, but on the basis of their, of, of their mummies and daddies. You know, they've got the wrong genes in them. Yeah. And some, you know, some spurious argument that somehow these dogs are somehow more innately dangerous than the other. Simon was able to take advantage of an amendment to the law made in 1997 when the government allowed some pit bulls to be exempted as long as they were insured, chipped and muzzled in public. But not everyone can afford to do this. So far, this dog has cost me about £4,000 in legal fees to keep alive and she's never uh, bitten anyone's uh, or growled at a human being. Yeah. Um, I mean, of course, I love the dog. Yeah. I got away with owning my dog probably because I'm a white middle class academic. That was right? what I was going to ask. Do you feel like you got any preferential treatment going into court on that day because of who you are? Yeah, I think it was, I, I think most certainly. And I think it, it had I been different, and that's been come up in conversations I've had with kids on the street when they say, yeah. well, how did you get to keep your dog? But banning anything only drives it underground. This was no different for the pit bull. Made these dogs, which were rare anyway, much more attractive to the wrong kind of people to want to own them, yeah. and it didn't deter anyone. It seems the new law drove pit bulls from the hands of the working class to those of the criminal class. 
He confirmed what I suspected anyway. Bringing in that law actually made them a much more attractive breed to a certain type of person and probably the worst type of person. There are now an estimated 10,000 pit bulls in the UK. Around the same number as when they were first banned. Where did they all come from? One of the boys from the yard, Reese, has told me although he's banned from owning dogs, he's actually involved in illegal breeding. Reese has just bred a litter of nine pit bull puppies. We've arranged a location where he's happy to meet. Oh, who's that? Yeah. Call him little Kano. He's gorgeous, isn't he? Beautiful, beautiful. How old is he? Three and a half weeks, coming on four weeks now. Yeah. Oh. You can get a Staffordshire Bull Terrier for around 50 quid, but a red-nosed pit bull puppy goes for a premium. How much did they go for? How much would you sell little young Kano for? <laughs> I couldn't put a price on him. Maybe 250 or something like that, or I might see somebody that has a passion for a beautiful dog, and they might say to me, I'll give you 400, yeah. and I might say, result. How do you bump into the people that, that take them off you? Why do they find you? Just by being in the park. Could happen here, could happen there, could happen tomorrow, could happen today. How many litters would you breed from one bitch? I would like to say just up to two. Yeah. But on occasion, by accident, it has been maybe three. But, um... He's definitely trying to feed. <laughs> One side to it is just that they have capabilities. They do. Young people think, oh, if I've got a pit bull, people are going to be scared of me. If I've got a pit bull, I'm, I'm the bad man sometimes. But at the same time, mm. sometimes having a dog like this, it, it does help you in situations. Maybe the, the fight that you thought you was going to have wouldn't happen because people see you've got a friend that's going to back you for life. And that's why you should never treat them bad. You should always be with them. You, you feed them, they're going to look after you. I can't help it. I love a dog. They stand by you through thick and thin. It doesn't matter if it's raining, snowing, sunny. It doesn't matter. They're always going to be by your side. Do you worry, though, that because they're a banned breed, that they could end up in the hands of the police and be destroyed? You know, breeding them is almost signing a death warrant for some of them, isn't it? That's, a, that's very scary, and it's a very scary thought. And I don't believe that any dog should be sentenced to any sort of death or anything like that, because it is the owners that are meant to be responsible for their pet. So it's the owner. I blame the owner. For backstreet breeders, one dog can produce 12 puppies every six months. And with a little worth up to five grand, it's not hard to understand why they'd do it. I don't think there's any question as to whether or not Reese should be breeding pit bulls. The answer is no. He's on a ban. He shouldn't even have a dog. You've got to question the motives of breeding pit bulls. He could breed staffs, but he wouldn't get as much money, so there is a financial motivation. The law not only drives demand, it keeps the problem underground. The law that's meant to protect people, that's meant to stop the breeding of pits, hasn't done that, and it's not going to, but what it has done is make sure that it's unregulated. There's a huge, huge problem, because there's loads of Reese's, loads and loads of Reese's, all up and down the country. Reese is just one person, that's just one litter but there are going to be more litters and there are going to be more dogs. And they're not always going to end up with the people that you sell them to. And that's the same can be said for every breeder and every dog that's bought. But in this situation, it's a dog with dangerous capabilities that quite a lot of quite dangerous people would probably want to have. The law has done nothing to curb the popularity of these dogs. But with the number of pits being bred and crossbred, how do you tell what's a pit bull and what's not? I've come to Gloucester to meet a woman who doesn't know what breed her dog is. And this life may depend on the answer. Hello. Hi, how, how are you doing? Are you doing? You're Louisa? Yeah. Stephen. Nice oh, to meet you. Nice to meet you. Who's this? Charlie. Hello, Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> He's sprightly. Hello. Hey, 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 calm down. Three months ago, Charlie was seized by a dog warden under suspicion of being a pit bull. Oh, hey. Sorry. Nearly. <laughs> Listen, mate, we don't know each other that well. No kisses yet. Hey. <laughs> so how did the dog warden 
Get out of here. Oh, but I had him on his harness on the lead, the other yeah. lead, it was like ripped. Yeah. So it let go and then the dog warden like took him. And then when I phoned up the next day, well, they said the police were involved and I'm going to go and pick him up and take him to be assessed. So. Assessed to what specify? To see, he's yeah, to specify if he's a pit bull. I mean, he's not that big, is he? No, he's not, is he? He's not more, I mean, when you think of pit bulls, you think of dogs with necks like. Yeah, that's what I thought, really, yeah. Yeah. Louisa took Charlie in three years ago. She had been going through a tough time after the death of her parents. We started drinking first and then started hanging around with different people and then got into like heavy drugs then. When Did you that say just, heavy, would you? Uh, what like you um, cocaine and heroin. OK, Papa. Mm. I said I was on that for like seven, eight years and then um, got on a script for methadone and then... Um, that's when I came to find Charlie then, then I just, like, stopped it. Yeah, and you've never gone back to anything since? No. For three um, years, so <laughs> that's good. And obviously that was you and, and your strength, but how much of you coming off that would you attribute to, to meeting this little fella? Yeah, I think it's, like, both helped each other, really. Yeah. You think it's a responsibility of it? You've yeah. got to be in a better place to be able to, yeah. to look after someone else, I suppose. Yeah, it is. Look at him. Oh. <laughs> What's your relationship like with him? Who is he to you? Who are you to him? Well, we're like best friends, really, but he's also like my baby, isn't he? So, yeah. You're a dangerous dog. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> you look very dangerous. Louise is due in court in the next few weeks, but first needs to have Charlie assessed. It's Tina. Hello, nice to meet you. She's meeting her lawyer, Tina Hay, and pit bull expert, Ian McParland. So, Charlie, mm -hmm. how old's Charlie? Um, he's just over three now. Three. And um, what did you think he was? Uh, well, I wasn't sure. I just thought he was a staff cross or something. Is that what you were told when you got him or when you went no, to the No, I wasn't told or... by the people. I just, because um, I didn't buy him or anything. It was just on the street where I got him off. But the people were, like, kicking him around and that on the street when he was a pet. OK. Um, right, so what I need to do now is just set up bits and pieces to do the behavioural exam. Either you or Stephen can bring him out into the garden. It doesn't matter. If Ian concludes Charlie is a pit bull, Louisa will have to plead guilty to owning an illegal dog. And he could be taken away for good. First, Ian has to check Charlie for dog on dog aggression. <laughs> I thought that was another dog then. And so does he initially. Yeah. And the reason it's backwards facing is so it doesn't get any calming signals from the dog. Right. So you just want to see how long, what, what his normal reaction would be. Yeah. And that's it. That well done. Know. Right. Get rid of this now. Ian's a retired policeman who set up the Met Police's status dog unit seven years ago. He knows everything there is to know about pits. 1976, and Ed Reed, who's a, an ex-professional wrestler from Canada who lived in Mitchell in South London, brought over the first two dogs, Trudy and Lucy, that are recognised, if you like, as the first two pit bulls to come over. And then in 77, he brought over a stud dog called Al Capone. Was he trying to imply anything about the dog then? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, and he also started a magazine called Sporting Dog Journal, which basically had fight reports in it. Exactly the same as you'd get reports on a football match, it had fight reports about dog fights. So do you think that banning the dogs helped the situation, or do you think it made the breed more sought after? I think it um, popularised the breed with people who perhaps shouldn't have any dog. Right. Because that had a little bit of kudos to it. Yeah. Given the pit bull's reputation, the facts are surprising. Pit bulls are the 19th most likely breed to attack a stranger, the 25th most likely to attack a member of their family. Or to be aggressive, should I say? So, what sort of dogs come, come ahead of Which them? one comes first then? Jack Russell? For, uh, for uh, aggression to people, aggression to, uh, to family members, to strangers, and to other dogs. Go Labrador. Daxon. Confusingly, Ian tells me that in the UK, the pit bull isn't actually a recognised breed at all. It's identified by a set of measurements that haven't changed since 1977 engage a dog's capability for fighting. Charlie must fit 60% of these to be classed a pit bull type. The question I'm asked is, does he meet the standard? Yeah. And, and I've got to be completely and utterly honest, whoever's asking me to do it. In some cases, siblings from the same litter have been classed as pit bulls and others not. Charlie's fate comes down to a matter of millimetres. Right, so we've done all the examination. The yeah. first thing to say is, he's absolutely lovely. 
Yeah. He's absolutely stunning. But he is a pit bull type. So that means you're going to be in Tina's hands yeah. um, for the court case on Monday. OK. On Monday, ultimately, whose decision will it be? Generally, it's three magistrates, and they will hear the police application, and if the police have any concerns, that's when they will raise them, and then they will hear from me, they will read Ian's report, and then they'll make their decision. And what was the police's concern? The police concern was primarily in relation to Louisa and her ability to handle Charlie. The court must assess whether Louisa is a capable owner and could still decide to have Charlie put down. It doesn't bear thinking about, does it? There's no, no and for people with who there's no personal or emotional attachment to the dog. Just making a decision that decides on whether or not Charlie gets no. to live or. Mm. I don't. Hopefully, everything will be all right. Hopefully. Even though the report for dog and owner in this case, for Charlie and Louisa, is great, is outstanding, even, was the word that Ian used, there's still the chance that he could get to court and the police could challenge it. You know, or that the copper could have a word in the magistrate's ear and say, listen, it is a pit bull, though. If it was to hurt someone, you know, you'd be responsible for that. And then the magistrate can decide that the dog should be destroyed. You know, she'd done quite well to hold herself together, but she was clearly getting quite upset when we discussed certain things. And the fear that she's got of returning back to where she was before and doing what she was doing before is obviously a very real one. And I can't imagine what it would feel like to have, have my dog taken away from me and put down, knowing that he wasn't a danger or, you know, a hazard to, to, to anyone. Louisa fell foul of the law just for rescuing Charlie. My instinct is that many people have these kinds of dogs for the right reasons. I've come back to meet John from the yard, who, despite his dubious training techniques, seems to have a genuine love of dogs. Hello? You're smiling. You're smiling. Hello? She's lovely, isn't she? Yeah, she's a good girl. You should take her for a walk. Yeah, man. Yeah, you're a walker? Yeah, I don't mind. Come here. She responds all right. Precious, come here. Hey, Precious. Hello. Come on. I'm not going to heel train her, am I? No. <laughs> yeah, I, don't, I don't think that's going to happen. Come on. Hey. Hey. <laughs> You're going to do my shoulders. <laughs> hey, hey. Yeah, I'm going to let you hold her because she's going to pull my shoulders. John tells me Precious is half pit bull. If true, she could fall within legal limits. How do people respond when they see you coming with a dog normally? They generally get out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> no, I mean, he's not a chihuahua, is it? <laughs> <laughs> it's been two years since one of John's other dogs attacked. He's keen to show he understands the dangers these dogs can pose. I mean, I walk that dog on a short leash, never let her off. Don't get myself into a position where it's going to be a problem. Yeah. You know, it's responsible ownership. That's what makes a dog. Yeah. You know, arsehole ownership makes an arsehole dog, isn't it? Two years ago, John moved to a new home. So are you allowed to have your dogs here? No, no dogs allowed on the estate at all. No? You're not allowed any animals on the, on the estate, innit? So. Yeah. So do you have to keep your dogs with friends? Yeah, I've got no other option. They're all living with families. Yeah. So they're all little family dogs now. Yeah. So, yeah. This place was provided by a homeless charity and is the most stable home he's had since he was young. You're not from here originally, are you? Uh, no. Um, I was born in Nottingham, uh, was put in care, and then got adopted, yeah. and then got made homeless, and then London. How did you end up in care in the first place? Um, I don't know, I got put in care um, yeah. when I was a baby, in it. so... Right. You were made homeless when you were 18? 18, yeah. By the people who adopted you? Yeah, my dad. He, oh, right. Yeah, he kicked me out, so... Uh, yeah, a couple of years of homelessness, did jail for a bit, and then hostels, and eventually got life sorted, in it, and then... Yeah, shit so happens. It does, <laughs> inevitably. John has now got an apprenticeship fixing coffee machines, but it could be some time before he can keep his dogs at home. How much do you miss having the dogs with you? 
Oh, miss it madly when you fall asleep. It's nice to see that dog sitting there falling asleep between your legs. It's yeah. like having a missus there, I suppose, that don't give you grief. <laughs> but that barks. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, just when I've been sofa surfing and all that, I still had the doggy. It was just yeah. with me. It was, it was there. Yeah. You know, she was my best mate. Right. <laughs> people that don't have to worry about people banging at their door yeah. will probably find it difficult to understand well, why you. Yeah, everyone leads a different life. I mean, the areas we live in, burglaries are a daily occurrence, mm -hmm. you know? And if someone comes sneaking up and then lifts the door and then, whoa, 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 you know, your house ain't getting burgled. Yeah. Simple. <laughs> yeah. John's love for dogs definitely comes from a positive place. Um, and it's quite easy to understand why he'd want that companionship. When you've suffered that kind of abandonment, it must be really hard. This is what you have to take into account is different people living different lives have different dogs for different reasons. You have a dog that suits your life and your surroundings. You know, he's not gonna go and get a spaniel. Even though lads like John and his dogs haven't done the breed any favors, it's the media that has really demonized them. When I was a kid, I don't remember hearing the term devil dog, to be honest. I hear it a lot now. There were dog crime up by half in London. I was bitten a hundred times by crazed devil dogs. Dogs like this Pitbull Terrier are being bred illicitly in London. And you've got a dog in a cage who doesn't look particularly aggressive. He looks like he's yawning, actually, but you can see his teeth. You know, they're not going to use a picture of one lying on its back with a, a child rubbing its belly, are they? We all know they sensationalise things to sell papers. People like to be able to put things in boxes. It makes it really, really easy, doesn't it? That's a devil dog, that's a devil dog, that's a devil dog. And then there's no compassion needed, is there? You don't have to think about it twice. It's just the devil dog, therefore it shouldn't be here. But this image doesn't tell the whole story. Of 27 fatalities caused by dogs in the last decade, 19 were caused by legal breed. Surely evidence the law is failing us. In 2013, one case hit the headlines. It involved breeds that weren't banned. Jade Anderson had gone to visit her friend, but she died alone at the house. When the police arrived at the house yesterday afternoon, they found Jade and five dogs. Four of them were completely out of control and had to be destroyed. Jade had returned from the local shop with some food and was alone in the house at the time. Although the police tape says this is a crime scene, it's not clear if any offence has been committed. None of the dogs was thought to have been of a breed banned under the dangerous dogs laws. The dogs were rarely walked and were underfed. Jade's father, Mike, was at home at the time of the attack. A neighbour knocked on the door. Um, just said, where's Jade, really? Yeah. Um, I said, oh. I'm not seeing her, she's, she stayed at a friend's house. Mm -hmm. And then um, she said, um, I think something's happened round the corner. But I could just tell by looking at her face that... Something was wrong. I just, I just knew, just gut, gut instinct, you know, your, your children. I just got in the car and rallied round, basically. Yeah. Um, parked the car in, it, it, was all, it was all cornered off. Um, It's, it's really hard to explain. It really is. I, I can't explain it. It was... Well, I don't think there's words for it, to be honest. No. them to, to be safe, not to go through what we've been through.
the hardest thing is the smallest things, like, you know, when you're driving and you're looking for your rear view mirror and you're just seeing your children, there's a gap. And it's just them little things that... Oh, she's full of life, Jade. You can see from all the pictures, all the... How happy she is. We're, we're happy family. Mike and Shirley didn't get the justice they were hoping for. The owner of the dogs escaped with minor charges of animal cruelty. I was expecting the court to give an appropriate sentence because it was the worst case of mistreating a dog. I thought, personally, it deserved a custodial sentence. Mm -hmm. And even if it weren't justice for Jade, yeah. it was... It was it's, there's nothing that's going to bring any kind of justice. No. But it was just something that I wanted to see. And she walked away with a suspended sentence and banned from having animals. She knew it was aggressive, didn't she? Mm. She advertised him on Facebook as being aggressive. She was almost proud of it. Yeah. She yeah. was. What is wrong with people? Under the law at the time, the owner couldn't be prosecuted for the attack because it took place on private property. The Andersons campaigned successfully to have that law changed. The reason why we did this is for people to get justice, because we never got no justice. No. Do you believe that there should be legislation as far as owning dogs? Everyone who's, a, who's got a pet pet dog, I think, I think they, 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 should, they should have a licence. Mm. I think it is. Because you've got dogs yourself, so you'd be putting yourself into that bracket. It's not like you're coming at this from a place where you... You're I'm not quite happy to pay a fee for, for a dog licence. Yeah. I'm quite happy for anything to happen under a dog's legislation. Because yeah. as a responsible owner, that's what I'd do. How do you feel about the current laws in place against banned breeds? We don't believe there should be a, a, a banned breed. Any dog's dangerous. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's people who make them aggressive. Yeah. Any dog's dangerous. Chihuahua's dangerous. Yeah. Any kind of dog is dangerous. In the wrong hands? Yes. You can't teach it to bite one person and not bite another person. That dog's going to bite, it's going to bite anyway, regardless. Mm -hmm. Because you've taught it that way. It's mm -hmm. as simple as that. You know, and, and that's why when you see people out in the streets and they've not got these aggressive dogs on leads and stuff like that, it's inevitable what's going to happen. There'll be another family that'll be sat here doing the same thing. I don't know where to start, really. Um, the damage it's done their family, you know. You know, the effects are very, very, very visible. And they lost a child. I, I, like, where do you, where do you begin? To so have gone through what they've gone through, you would expect them to say, yes, they should be banned. You know, and probably a few other breeds and the ones that are on there as well. But they get that it's people. People just get dogs. And there'll be a lot of people who disagree with it, but having learned what I've learned through this documentary, right now, standing here, especially having just spoken to Mike and Shirley, I agree with his idea for licensing. And perhaps that should be more stringent with bigger and more capable dogs. Eight children and 27 people overall have been killed by dangerous dogs in the last 10 years. And they're big numbers. And I'm sure quite a lot of them could have been avoided. It seems to me the law is far too focused on the pit bull. Letting dangerous dogs of any breed slip through the net. I've come to the Met Police's status dog unit to ask Inspector Paddy O'Hara if he thinks the law is working. The one thing I can't get my head round is pit bulls being a banned breed, yet most fatalities due to dog bites are not due to bites by pit bulls. So does it make sense to have that breed singled out? Every dog has got the capability to be a dangerous dog. Every dog, regardless of the breed of dog. And I think it comes down to what the dog was designed to do in terms of public protection. A pit bull dog is an extremely powerful dog. They will not bite and let go. They will bite and stay on. And when they stay on, they will wrestle, and that will cause significant damage in terms of muscle, tendons, etc. And that will require really serious medical intervention, bearing in mind that if you look at the dog bite statistics, the most likely victim is a child between four and nine years of age, and that really has to drive home the message that it has to be about prevention. And then do you think that's 
bad ownership? Do you think that's a lack of socialisation or do you think that's just something that is in the dog? Ownership comes into that in a very, in a very strong way. There are not many dog bites that aren't preventable and that's the, you know, the annoying thing when I see cases coming across my desk day in, day out. Often simple measures that owners could have taken would have prevented it from happening. Paddy tells me the idea of dog licensing would be hard to police. But compulsory microchipping for all dogs has just been introduced this year. I mean, that is a positive step. And, and anything that encourages owners to be responsible with their dog, to have that bond, to get the dog registered with, with a veterinary surgery, you know, in particular, is really important. Our demon dogs, are weapon dogs, weaponised dogs, is a bigger part of the problem as the media projects. I, I don't think so. A, a, an element of our work, certainly, is to do with that but a greater proportion is to do with dogs that haven't been socialised properly or that are in the hands of an irresponsible owner who doesn't necessarily recognise the needs of the animal and therefore there is then a, a, you know, a behavioural problem thereafter. We don't see significant numbers of crimes or significant numbers of bites that are committed by dogs that are deliberately taught to bite or deliberately taught to be aggressive. Paddy was all right. It was good talking to him. I think he gave some very, very good points. And it's nice to hear the other side of the argument. It can't all be one-sided just because I love bully breeds and I love dogs. It wouldn't be fair for it to be. Um, and there is clearly a problem. I hope people take from what Paddy said what I did, which was really that the largest part of the problem is not the, the sensationalized picture of a demon dog that you see in the papers or weapon dogs and weaponized dogs. It's actually as simple as just welfare. It's people not looking after animals correctly. And I think that's evident in what happened to Jade Anderson. That definitely comes down to welfare and the mistreatment of animals. The law as it stands is detracting from the real problem, as millions of pounds of public money is spent on seizing dogs that are illegal but safe. It also puts their owners through emotional turmoil. Hello, how you doing? I'm returning to Gloucester to see Pitbull owner Louisa and her lawyer Tina. They're about to see the magistrates who will decide whether Charlie will be put down or not. They're looking at whether Charlie poses any danger to the public and they're looking at whether Louisa is a fit and proper person, whether she can handle him and hopefully we can tick both of those boxes but you never know with these things. How's the run-up been? You must have been feeling terribly anxious. Yeah, yesterday I was really thinking about it a lot and stuff like that. When I was playing with him and things like that, I just thought, he wouldn't hurt no one, so I can't believe he's come to this, but... One way or another today, it'll be sorted, yeah, won't it? Indeed. All right, well, best of luck. It's been five months since Charlie was seized by a dog warden. Since then, the police have visited Louisa at home and filed their report. As I look after Charlie with Louisa's mate, Tina will put their case to the court. I'm trying to read their faces. Yes. You alright? Yes. Oh, yes. Come on. Good news. Well done, madam. You should be jumping up and down. It's all good. Well done. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well done. Charlie, yay! Go back in the chill now. Well done. Well, thank you. Oh, he just wants to play. In the last three years across the country, police have seized almost 5,000 dogs like Charlie, suspected of being banned breeds. The courts don't like to put a healthy, good natured dog down. But when it comes to pit bull type dogs, the courts are very, very cautious. And if the police are against you in any way, then it can be a real uphill struggle. Despite working for Louisa and Charlie today, it's the arbitrary nature of the law that worries me the most. Rather than punishing innocent breeds, shouldn't the law be focused instead on bad dogs and bad owners? Arthur is my mate. You know, he is, he's my boy. First thing I do when I wake up in the morning, you know, is let him out, play with him in the garden, feed him, take him for a walk. And a lot of people get dogs because of what they give them, but it's important that you give the dog what it needs as well. That's really, really important. <whistles> Come here, boy. If you're going to have a pit bull, a bully breed, any large dog, you need to be aware of its capabilities. You need to, to be sensible. 
You know, people need to be smarter about how they look after their animals. And remember that they are animals. Arthur, what's this? For many, the Dangerous Dogs Act is a classic example of knee-jerk legislation, featured in a poll of the top ten most unpopular laws. What I've learned is how classless the decision was to ban pit bulls. <laughs> you know, I didn't want to upset the Green Welly Brigade or whatever it was that um, Mr Baker said. I think if you look at the law that is in place and the numbers of dog bites that still occur, the answer to the problem is not banning a breed. It doesn't solve the problem. It hasn't solved the problem. It's not going to solve the problem. I think the answer is teaching people to be more responsible and also making sure people are more accountable for their dogs. And I think that's where, you know, microchipping and potentially licensing should come into play. In 25 years, no one in power has dared or perhaps cared to challenge this law. And I don't see that happening anytime soon. Ultimately, I don't agree with the law, but what politician is going to put the neck on the line? You know, who's going to have the balls to make any change to it? Because if anything happens with a pit bull afterwards, they're going to be held accountable for it, aren't they? Which is sad, really, because as things are, it's making no difference. The number of dog bites is not on the way down. Because they're a banned breed, that they could end up in the hands of the police and be destroyed. You know, breeding them is more signing a death warrant for some of them, isn't it? That's a, that's very scary, and it's a very scary thought. And I don't believe that any dog should be sentenced to any sort of death or anything like that, because it is the owners that are meant to be responsible for their pet. So it's the owner. I blame the owner. For backstreet breeders, one dog can produce 12 puppies every six months. And with a little worth up to five grand, it's not hard to understand why they'd do it. I don't think there's any question as to whether or not Reese should be breeding pit bulls. The answer is no. He's on a ban. He shouldn't even have a dog. You've got to question the motives of breeding pit bulls. He could breed staffs, but he wouldn't get as much money. So there is a financial motivation. The law not only drives demand, it keeps the problem underground. The law that's meant to protect people, that's meant to stop the breeding of pits, hasn't done that and it's not going to, but what it has done is make sure that it's unregulated. There's a huge, huge problem because there's loads of Reese's, loads and loads of Reese's all up and down the country. Reese is just one person, that's just one litter, but there are going to be more litters and there are going to be more dogs and they're not always going to end up with the people that you sell them to and that's, the same can be said for every breeder and every dog that's bought. But in this situation, it's a dog with dangerous capabilities that quite a lot of quite dangerous people would probably want to have. The law has done nothing to curb the popularity of these dogs. But with the number of pits being bred and crossbred, how do you tell what's a pit bull and what's not? I've come to Gloucester to meet a woman who doesn't know what breed her dog is. And this life may depend on the answer. Hello. Hi, how are you doing? You're Louisa? Yeah. Stephen, nice oh, to hello. meet you. Nice to meet you. Who's this? Charlie. Hello, Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> He's sprightly. Hello. <laughs> hey, 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 calm down. Three months ago, Charlie was seized by a dog warden under suspicion of being a pit bull. Oh, hey. Sorry. Nearly. <laughs> Listen, mate, we don't know each other that well. No kisses yet. Hey. <laughs> calm down. <laughs> so how did the dog warden get over him? Oh, but I had him on his harness on the lead, the other yeah. lead, it was like ripped. Yeah. So it let go and then the dog warden like took him. And then when I phoned up the next day, well, they said the police were involved and I'm going to go and pick him up and take him to be assessed. So... Assessed to what specifies to see, Yeah, to specify if he's a pit bull. I mean, he's not that big, is he? No, he's not, is he? He's not what, I mean, when you think of pit bulls, you think of dogs with necks like... Yeah, that's what I thought, really, yeah. Yeah. Louisa took Charlie in three years ago. It's nice to hear the other side of the argument. It can't all be one-sided just because I love bully breeds and I love dogs. It wouldn't be fair for it to be. Um, 
then there is clearly a problem. I hope people take from what Paddy said what I did, which was really that the largest part of the problem is not the, the sensationalised picture of a demon dog that you see in the papers or weapon dogs and weaponised dogs. It's actually as simple as just welfare. It's people not looking after animals correctly. And I think that's evident in what happened to Jade Anderson. That definitely comes down to welfare and the mistreatment of animals. The law as it stands is detracting from the real problem, as millions of pounds of public money is spent on seizing dogs that are illegal but safe. It also puts their owners through emotional turmoil. Hello, how you doing? I'm returning to Gloucester to see Pitbull owner Louisa and her lawyer Tina. They're about to see the magistrates who will decide whether Charlie will be put down or not. They're looking at whether Charlie poses any danger to the public and they're looking at whether Louisa is a fit and proper person, whether she can handle him, and hopefully we can tick both of those boxes, but you never know with these things. How's the run-up been? You must have been feeling terribly anxious. Yeah, yesterday I was really thinking about it a lot and stuff like that. When I was playing with other things like that, I just thought, you wouldn't hurt no one, so I can't believe it's come to this, but... One way or another today, it'll be sorted, yeah, won't it? Indeed. All right, well, best of luck. It's been five months since Charlie was seized by a dog warden. Since then, the police have visited Louisa at home and filed their report. As I look after Charlie with Louisa's mate, Tina will put their case to the court. I'm trying to read their faces. Yes. You alright? Yes. Oh, come on. Good news. Well done, well done. You should be jumping up and down. <laughs> it's all good. Well done. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well done. Charlie, yay! Still back in the chill now. Uh, well done. Well, thank you. Oh, he just wants to play. In the last three years across the country, police have seized almost 5,000 dogs like Charlie, suspected of being banned breeds. The courts don't like to put a healthy, good-natured dog down, but when it comes to pit bull-type dogs, the courts are very, very cautious. And if the police are against you in any way, then it can be a real uphill struggle. Despite working for Louisa and Charlie today, it's the arbitrary nature of the law that worries me the most. Rather than punishing innocent breeds, shouldn't the law be focused instead on bad dogs? A few other breeds and the ones that are on there as well. But they get that it's people. People just get dogs. And there'll be a lot of people who disagree with it, but having learned what I've learned through this documentary, right now, standing here, especially having just spoken to Mike and Shirley, I agree with his idea for licensing and perhaps that should be more stringent with bigger and more capable dogs. Eight children and 27 people overall have been killed by dangerous dogs in the last 10 years. And they're big numbers. And I'm sure quite a lot of them could have been avoided. It seems to me the law is far too focused on the pit bull letting dangerous dogs of any breed slip through the net. I've come to the Met Police's status dog unit to ask Inspector Paddy O'Hara if he thinks the law is working. The one thing I can't get my head round is pit bulls being a banned breed, yet most fatalities due to dog bites are not due to bites by pit bulls. So does it make sense to have that breed singled out? Every dog has got the capability to be a dangerous dog. Every dog, regardless of the breed of dog. And I think it comes down to what the dog was designed to do in terms of public protection. A pit bull dog is an extremely powerful dog. They will not bite and let go. They will bite and stay on. And when they stay on, they will wrestle. And that will cause significant damage in terms of muscle, tendons, etc. And that will require really serious medical intervention bearing in mind that if you look at the dog bite statistics, the most likely victim is a child between four and nine years of age. And that really has to drive home the message that it has to be about prevention. And, and then do you think that's bad ownership? Do you think that's a lack of socialization? Or do you think that's just something that is in the dog? Ownership comes into that in a very, in a very strong way. There are not many dog bites that aren't preventable. And that's the, you know, the annoying thing when I see cases coming across my desk day in, 
day out, often simple measures that owners could have taken would have prevented it from happening. Paddy tells me the idea of dog licensing would be hard to police, but compulsory microchipping for all dogs has just been introduced this year. I mean, that is a positive step, and, and anything that encourages owners to be responsible with their dog, to have that bond, to get the dog registered with, with a veterinary surgery, you know, in particular, is really important. Our demon dogs, are weapon dogs, weaponised dogs, is a bigger part of the problem as the media projects. I, I don't think so. A, a, an element of our work, certainly, is to do with that. But a greater proportion is to do with dogs that haven't been socialised properly or that are in the hands of an irresponsible owner who doesn't necessarily recognise the needs of the animal and therefore there is then a, a, you know, a behavioural problem thereafter. We don't see significant numbers of crime. What, what his normal reaction would be? Yeah. And that's it. Well done. Know. Right. Get rid of this now. Ian's a retired policeman who set up the Met Police's status dog unit seven years ago. He knows everything there is to know about pits. 1976, and Ed Reed, who's a, an ex-professional wrestler from Canada who lived in Mitchell in South London, brought over the first two dogs, Trudy and Lucy, that are recognised, if you like, as the first two pit bulls to come over. And then in 77, he brought over a stud dog called Al Capone. Was he trying to imply anything about the dogs? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, and he also started a magazine called Sporting Dog Journal which basically had fight reports in it. Exactly the same as you'd get reports on a football match, it had fight reports about dog fights. So do you think that banning the dogs helped the situation or do you think it made the breed more sought after? I think it um, popularised the breed with people who perhaps shouldn't have any dog. Right. Because that had a little bit of kudos to it. Yeah. Given the pit bull's reputation, the facts are surprising. Pit bulls? are the 19th most likely breed to attack a stranger, the 25th most likely to attack a member of their family. Or to be aggressive, should I say. So what sort of dogs come, come ahead Which of Which one comes first then? Jack Russell? For, uh, for uh, aggression to people, aggression to, uh, to family members, to strangers and to other dogs. Labrador. Daxon. Confusingly, Ian tells me that in the UK, the pit bull isn't actually a recognised breed at all. It's identified by a set of measurements that haven't changed since 1977 and gauge a dog's capability for fighting. Charlie must fit 60% of these to be classed a pit bull type. The question I'm asked is, does he meet the standard? Yeah. And, and I've got to be completely and utterly honest, whoever's asking me to do it. In some cases, siblings from the same litter have been classed as pit bulls and others not. Charlie's fate comes down to a matter of millimetres. Right, so we've done all the examination. The yeah. first thing to say is he's absolutely lovely. Yeah. He's absolutely stunning. But he is a pit bull type. So that means you're going to be in Tina's hands yeah. um, for the court case on Monday. OK. On Monday, ultimately, whose decision will it be? Generally, it's three magistrates, and they will hear the police application, and if the police have any concerns, that's when they will raise them, and then they will hear from me, they will read Ian's report, and then they'll make their decision. And what was the police's concern? The police concern was primarily in relation to Louisa and her ability to handle Charlie. The court must assess whether Louisa is a capable owner and could still decide to have Charlie put down. It doesn't bear thinking about, does it? There's no... no and for people... It's facing so it doesn't get any calming signals from the dog. Right. So you just want to see how long, what his normal reaction would be. Yeah. And that's it. Well okay, done. No. Right. Get rid of this now. Ian's a retired policeman who set up the Met Police's status dog unit seven years ago. He knows everything there is to know about pits. 1976, and Ed Reed, who's a, an ex-professional wrestler from Canada who lived in Mitchell in South London, brought over the first two dogs, Trudy and Lucy, that are recognised, if you like, as the first two pit bulls to come over. And then in 77, he brought over a stud dog called Al Capone. Was he trying to imply anything about the dogs? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, and he also started a magazine called the Sporting Dog Journal which basically had fight reports in it. Exactly the same as you'd get reports on a football match, it had fight reports about dog fights. So do you think that banning the dogs helped the situation or do you think it made the breed more sought after? I think it um, popularised the breed with people who perhaps shouldn't have any dog. Right. Because that had a little bit of kudos to it. Yeah. 
Given the Pitbull's reputation, the facts are surprising. Pitbulls are the 19th most likely breed to attack a stranger, the 25th most likely to attack a member of their family. Or to be aggressive, should I say. So what sort of dogs family. come come ahead Which of Which one comes first then? Jack Russell? For, uh, for uh, aggression to people, aggression to, uh, to family members, to strangers and to other dogs. Go Labrador. Daxon. Confusingly, Ian tells me that in the UK, the pit bull isn't actually a recognised breed at all. It's identified by a set of measurements that haven't changed since 1977 and gauge a dog's capability for fighting. Charlie must fit 60% of these to be classed a pit bull type. The question I'm asked is, does he meet the standard? Yeah. And, and I've got to be completely and utterly honest, whoever's asking me to do it. In some cases, siblings from the same litter have been classed as pit bulls and others not. Charlie's fate comes down to a matter of millimetres. Right, so we've done all the examination. The yeah. first thing to say is, is absolutely lovely. Yeah. He's absolutely stunning. But he is a pit bull type. So that means you're going to be in Tina's hands yeah. um, for the court case on Monday. OK. On Monday, ultimately, whose decision will it be? Generally, it's three magistrates, and they will hear the police application, and if the police have any concerns, that's when they will raise them, and then they will hear from me, they will read Ian's report, and then they'll make their decision. And what was the police's concern? The police concern was primarily in relation to Louisa and her ability to handle Charlie. The court must assess whether Louisa is a capable owner and could still decide to have Charlie put down. Ah, oh, come on. Oh, well done, you should be jumping up and down. <laughs> it's all good. Thank you. Well done. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well done. Charlie, yay! Let's go back in the chill now. <laughs> well done. Well, thank you. Oh, he just wants to play. In the last three years across the country, police have seized almost 5,000 dogs like Charlie, suspected of being banned breeds. The courts don't like to put a healthy, good-natured dog down. But when it comes to pit bull-type dogs, the courts are very, very cautious. And if the police are against you in any way, then it can be a real uphill struggle. Despite working for Louisa and Charlie today, it's the arbitrary nature of the law that worries me the most. Rather than punishing innocent breeds, shouldn't the law be focused instead on bad dogs and bad owners? Arthur is my mate. You know, he is, he's my boy. First thing I do when I wake up in the morning, you know, is let him out, play with him in the garden, feed him, take him for a walk. And a lot of people get dogs because of what they give them, but it's important that you give the dog what it needs as well. That's really, really important. <whistles> Come here, boy. If you're going to have a pit bull, a bully breed, any large dog, you need to be aware of its capabilities. You need to, to be sensible. You know, people need to be smarter about how they look after their animals. And remember that they are animals. For many, the Dangerous Dogs Act is a classic example of knee-jerk legislation, featured in a poll of the top ten most unpopular laws. What I've learned is how classless the decision was to ban pit bulls. You know, I didn't want to upset the Green Welly Brigade, or whatever it was that um, Mr Baker said. I think if you look at the law that is in place, and the numbers of dog bites that still occur, the answer to the problem is not banning a breed. It doesn't solve a problem. It hasn't solved the problem. It's not going to solve the problem. I think the answer is teaching people to be more responsible and also making sure people are more accountable for their dogs. And I think that's where, you know, microchipping and potentially licensing should come into play. In 25 years, no one in power has dared or perhaps cared to challenge this law. And I don't see that happening anytime soon. Ultimately, I don't agree with the law, but what politician is going to put their neck on the line? You know, who's going to have the balls to make any change to it? Because if anything happens with a pit bull afterwards, they're going to be held accountable for it, aren't they? Which is sad, really, because as things are, it's making no difference. The number of dog bites is not on the way down supposed to do it in my opinion yeah it saw its owner getting hurt 
and went, you know what, that ain't happening on my watch. Yeah. And why should the dog get punished for that? So they tried saying that we used the dogs as weapons. Right. Yeah, but the dogs were in this yard when the yard was sealed. Yeah. And they've come up in here. Can you blame the dog? You ever worry about putting a dog in harm's way? Um, do you mean by having a dog that does a job? Well, the whole reason of humans having dogs has always been to help them on a hunt or whatever else. I mean, sheep dogs the first to be used weren't to round up sheep, it was to keep the wolves away from the sheep, you know? That's why Rottweilers are sheep dogs, you know? That's why it's, it's so... It's... No, the dog's there to do a job, you know? If not, don't have the dog, you know? Pictures of the year were pretty gruesome. Um, that wasn't very pretty. To be honest, though, I would have expected worse. Three dogs, or with the capabilities those dogs have, it's probably not a good idea to encourage those behaviours in a dog, especially not not dogs as capable as that, because then it's always something that they stand the chance of doing, or it's how they're going to react if they are ever in a situation. Dogs are very loyal and they are very protective. So further encouraging that behaviour probably makes it more likely to happen, which is, is not a good thing. If you look at, at what's happened as a result of dogs that have been in his and his mate's care attacking people, it's not done their lives any favours. You know, not the dogs or theirs. Those people who encourage aggressive behaviour in these dogs only perpetuate their bad reputations. But that leaves a majority of bull breed owners, like me, tarred with the same brush. I have an Aylstone old time English bulldog called Arthur. People's reactions to him in the park um, differ, to be honest with you. It really depends on what people know about dogs. Some people see him and go, oh my god, I haven't seen an old time in ages, because there's not that many of them about. Other people think he's a pit. Oh my God, you need to put that dog down. When you're out with these dogs, you get used to being judged. But certain breeds and their owners have an unfair reputation. Funny when little dogs run up to him, you know, start barking and yapping, essentially causing the problem. He's all right, mate. Arthur, come here, boy. <laughs> when you think about status dogs and who might have them, it's generally the stereotype that comes to mind, isn't it? Young boys. Tattoos, low socioeconomic background. Me. <laughs> He's sprightly. Hello. Hey, 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 calm down. Three months ago, Charlie was seized by a dog warden under suspicion of being a pit bull. Oh, hey. Sorry. Nearly. <laughs> Listen, mate, we don't know each other that well. No kisses yet. Hey. <laughs> so, how did the dog warden get over him? Oh, but well, I had him on his harness on the lead, the other yeah. lead, it was, like, ripped. Yeah. So it let go, and then the dog warden, like, took him. And then when I phoned up the next day, well, they said the police were involved, and I'm going to go and pick him up and take him to be assessed. So... Assessed to what specify to see, his Yeah, to specify if he's a pit bull. I mean, he's not that big, is he? No, he's not, is he? He's not what... I mean, when you think of pit bulls, you think of dogs with necks, like... Yeah, that's what I thought, really, yeah. Yeah. Louisa took Charlie in three years ago. She had been going through a tough time after the death of her parents. We started drinking first and then started hanging around with different people and then got into like heavy drugs then. When Did you that say just, heavy, what'd you, uh, what like, do you mean? Um, cocaine and heroin. OK, proper. Mm. And so I was on that for like seven, eight years and then um, got on a script for methadone and then... Um, that's when I came to find Charlie then, then I just, like, stopped it. Yeah, and you've never gone back to anything since? No. For three um, years, so <laughs> that's good. And obviously that was you and, and your strength, but how much of you coming off that would you attribute to, to meeting this little fella? Yeah, I think it's, like, both helped each other, really. Yeah. You think it's a responsibility of it? You've yeah. got to be in a better place to be able to, yeah. to look after someone else, I suppose. Yeah, it is. Look at him. Oh. <laughs> What's your relationship like with him? Who is he to you? Who are you to him? Well, we're like best friends, really, but he's also like my baby, isn't he? So, yeah. You're a dangerous dog. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> you look very dangerous. Louise is due in court in the next few weeks, but first needs to have Charlie assessed. Just 
Tina. Hello, nice to meet you. She's meeting her lawyer, Tina Hay, and pit bull expert, Ian McParland. So, Charlie, how old's Charlie? Um, he's just a three now. Three. And um, what did you think he was? Uh, well, I wasn't sure. I just thought he was a staff cross or something. Is that what you were told when you got him or when you went no, to the No, I wasn't told so... by the people. I just, because um, I didn't buy him or anything. It was just on the street where I got him off. But the people were, like, just kicking him around and that with the street when he was a pack. OK. Um, right, so what I need to do now is just set up bits and pieces to do the behavioural exam. Either you or Stephen can bring him out into the garden, it doesn't matter. If Ian concludes Charlie is a pit bull, Louisa will have to plead guilty to owning an illegal dog. And he could be taken away for good. First, Ian has to check Charlie for dog on dog aggression. <laughs> I thought that was another dog then. And so does he initially. Yeah. And the reason it's backwards facing is so it doesn't get any calming signals from the dog. Right. So you just want to see how long, what, what his normal reaction would be. Yeah. And that's it. That well done. Know. Right. Get rid of this now. Ian's a retired policeman who set up the Met Police's status dog unit seven years ago. He knows everything there is to know about pits. 1976, and Ed Reed, who's a, an ex-professional wrestler from Canada who lived in Mitchell in South London, brought over the first two dogs, Trudy and Lucy, that are recognised, if you like, as the first two pit bulls to come over. And then in 77, he brought over a stud dog called Al Capone. Was he trying to imply anything about the dog then? Yeah. <laughs> yeah well, and he also started a magazine called Sporting Dog Journal, which basically had fight reports in it. Exactly the same as you'd get reports on a football match, it had fight reports about dog fights. So do you think that banning the dogs helped the situation or do you think it made the breed more sought after? I think it um, popularised the breed with people who perhaps shouldn't have any dog. Right. Because that had a little bit of kudos to it. Yeah. Given the pit bull's reputation, the facts are surprising. Pit bulls? are the 19th most likely breed to attack a stranger, the 25th most likely to attack a member of their family. Or to be aggressive, should I say. So what sort of dogs come, come ahead of Which them? one comes first, then? Jack Russell? For, uh, for uh, aggression to people, aggression to, uh, to family members, to strangers, and to other dogs. Go Labrador. On. Daxon. Confusingly, Ian tells me that in the UK, the pit bull isn't actually a recognised breed at all. It's identified by a set of measurements that haven't changed since 1977 and gauge a dog's capability for fighting. Charlie must fit 60% of these to be classed a pit bull type. The question I'm asked is, does he meet the standard? Yeah. And, and I've got to be completely and utterly honest, whoever's asking me to do it. In some cases, siblings from the same litter have been classed as pit bulls and others not. Charlie's fate comes down to a matter of millimetres. Right, so we've done all the examination. The yeah. first thing to say is he's absolutely lovely. Yeah. He's absolutely stunning. But he is a pit bull type. So that means you're going to be in Tina's hands yeah. um, for the court case on Monday. OK. On Monday, ultimately, whose decision will it be? Generally, it's three magistrates, and they will hear the police application, and if the police have any concerns, that's when they will raise them, and then they will hear from me, they will read Ian's report, and then they'll make their decision. And what was the police's concern? The police concern was primarily in relation to Louisa and her ability to handle Charlie. The court must assess whether Louisa is a capable owner and could still decide one dog can produce 12 puppies every six months. And with a little worth up to five grand, it's not hard to understand why they'd do it. I don't think there's any question as to whether or not Reese should be breeding pit bulls. The answer is no. He's on a ban. He shouldn't even have a dog. You've got to question the motives of breeding pit bulls. He could breed staffs, but he wouldn't get as much money. So there is a financial motivation. The law not only drives demand, it keeps the problem underground. The law that's meant to protect people, that's meant to stop the breeding of pits, hasn't done that and it's not going to, but what it has done is make sure that it's unregulated. There's a huge, huge problem because there's loads of Reese's, loads and loads of Reese's all up and down the country. Reese is just one person, that's just one litter, but there are going to be more litters and there are going to be more dogs and they're not always going to end up with the people that you sell them to and that's the same can be said for every breeder and every dog that's bought, but 
In this situation, it's a dog with dangerous capabilities that quite a lot of quite dangerous people would probably want to have. The law has done nothing to curb the popularity of these dogs. But with the number of pits being bred and crossbred, how do you tell what's a pit bull and what's not? I've come to Gloucester to meet a woman who doesn't know what breed her dog is. And this life may depend on the answer. Hello. Hi, how are you doing? You're Louisa? Yeah. Stephen, nice Hi, to meet you. Nice to meet you. you. Who's this? Charlie. Hello, Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> He's sprightly. Hello. Hey, 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 calm down. Three months ago, Charlie was seized by a dog warden under suspicion of being a pit bull. Oh, hey! Sorry. Nearly. <laughs> Listen, mate, we don't know each other that well. No kisses yet. Hey. Oh, <laughs> so how did the dog warden get over him? Oh, well, I had him on his harness on the lead, the other yeah. lead. It was, like, ripped. Yeah. So it let go, and then the dog warden, like, took him. And then when I phoned up the next day, well, they said the police were involved, and I'm going to go and pick him up and take him to be assessed. So... Assess to what specifies to see, breed? Yeah, to specify if he's a pit bull. I mean, he's not that big, is he? No, he's not, is he? He's not what... I mean, when you think of pit bulls, you think of dogs with necks like... Yeah, that's what I thought, really, yeah. Yeah. Louisa took Charlie in three years ago. She had been going through a tough time after the death of her parents. We started drinking first, and then started hanging around with different people, and then got into, like, heavy drugs then. When Did you say just, heavy, would you? Uh, what like, you um, cocaine and heroin. OK. Bye-bye. Mm. So I was on that for, like, seven, eight years, and then um, got on a script for methadone, and um, that's when I came... A little bit of name-calling, especially when you get involved in certain things and as you get older. I do feel a little bit conflicted, you know, because, to be fair, I would want my dog to protect me. But then, at the same time, I don't go with my dog into biting tyres and I don't have a command for him to... You know? I understand the appeal of illegal dogs to these young men. But nationwide, this kind of dog has been responsible for three fatal attacks in the last two years. The following day, John brings me back to the place where one of his pit bulls was involved in a violent attack. He's brought a different dog along with him. So this is where it happened? This is where it happened, this is where... We used to be all the time. You used to live here as well? Yeah, when I was homeless. How long were you here for? About a year and a half. Yeah? Yeah. Hey, oh. So what happened? Um, we had someone living here in a caravan. Yeah. And they were wanted by the old bill for something that was rather unscrupulous. Yeah. And we weren't happy about it, so we tried to hand him into the police. And he got a phone call out to his family or whatever. They came storming in the gates. Yeah. Started a fight with us. So what happened when they come through the gate? Um, I was up in the arch fixing a van. Yeah. And I just heard a load of commotion, came running out, and another guy was there rocking it out with like, the two big keys. Yeah. And then the dogs were running around, and then I heard screaming, and then yeah. see what happened, and yeah, it wasn't... Um, what sort of injuries did they sustain? Uh, just flesh, it was, it was flesh wounds, so they weren't at risk of dying or anything, but yeah, they had... Um, a, a severe wound to one of the geese's faces. He's had his ear nearly bitten off. Oh. And another guy had his arm really badly quite ripped up. Yeah. You see the side of his oh, ear. Oh, that's his ear, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, mate. Um, it's, oh. A, it's a gruesome injury. Yeah. It's not It's not very nice. And well, I'm not proud that it happened. Don't think for one second I'm trying to glorify it in any way whatsoever. But the dog did what a dog was supposed to do, in my opinion. Yeah. It saw its owner getting hurt and went, you know what, that ain't happening on my watch. Yep. And why should the dog get punished for that? So they tried saying that we used the dogs as weapons. Right. Yeah, but the dogs were in this yard when the yard was sealed. Yeah. And they've come up in here. Can you blame the dog? You ever worry about putting a dog in harm's way? Um, do you mean by having a dog that does a job? Well, the whole reason of humans having dogs has always been to help them on a hunt or whatever else. I mean, sheep dogs were first to be used weren't to round up sheep, it was to keep the wolves away from the sheep, you know? That's why Rottweilers are sheep dogs, you know? That's where it's, it's so... It's, 